Part two of our NFL Draft running backs preview right now on Fantasy Football Today in 5. I'm Adam Azer with Emery Hunt. Emery scouts these guys all year long. Scouts football leagues that I didn't even know existed. Follow him at FBall Game Plan on Twitter. All right, we're talking about 6 through 10 basically in your rankings. But number 10 is Kenneth Walker who might be number one. I mean, I see him on the CBSports.com prospect rankings as number one. So you're not as high on uh, the junior out of Michigan State, Kenneth Walker. Yeah, to me, he's a, he's a good back. Don't get me wrong. But guys that I have ahead of him, are, I think, are bring a little bit more to the table. He's a, a lot like Josh Jacobs in my eyes. Someone that's solid, doesn't really have that burst. I know he ran a 4-3 at the, at the combine, but I'm tossing it out the window because it doesn't play 4-3. And everyone was running 4-2s and 4-3s at the NFL combine. But I think he has good speed. He has a little bit of a uh, wiggle that you want, but to me, he's just like a Josh Jacobs, someone that can be productive, but I just think that he's not as dynamic as the other backs. He scored 31 rushing touchdowns in his last two seasons, including 18 in 2021. Does that stat matter to you at all when you scout a player? Absolutely, because you have to have a nose for the for the end zone. You have to be able to score the ball. That's the name of the game, um, and it shows you that he's a very good short yardage runner, someone that can find little creases in the defense, especially when you're talking about from five yards going in, that's a valued asset. Some guys can't score when they're one yard away and he's, he's able to do so a lot. So yeah, scoring the ball is key. By the way, what do you make of all those low 40 times? I heard you got out there, ran like a four or five. Exactly. <laughs> at 40 years old. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I just don't understand if people know how fast four two is. To me, I've only seen two guys that have three guys. Chris Johnson was the more recent. Then you had someone like Rocket Ishmael or Bo Jackson. Those guys look 4-2. Everyone else that ran 4-2 after that, you could debate. Maybe there's 4-3. But to me, when you look like you run 4-2, it shows. And I just didn't think a lot of those guys look like they ran 4-2. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was just curious. So many incredible 40 times at the Combine this year. So let's talk about some more players. Tyler Algier out of BYU. You like him a lot. You have him at RB6. Yeah, he's at RB6. He's a good foundational back. We talked about that in last episode where guys that can start, he carried the rocket at BYU, who's a, the lead back there, and he has a lot of good work withable skills. Runs inside well, has a, the short area burst you want, can make guys miss in terms of bouncing off tackles, and I also feel as though he's a solid receiver out of the back to a good all around game uh, coming out of BYU. Sincere McCormick, one of the better names in the uh, running back class. Sincere McCormick out of UTSA. I want to say last year or the year before, he led the nation in rushing. So he can definitely pick him up and put him down. And he is someone that's a fluid athlete. When he runs, it's like you're pouring water out of a out of a jug. That's how fluid he runs the football. He's got the burst you want, so he's going to be a chunk playmaker at the NFL level. Someone people need to talk more about coming out of UTSA. Sincere McCormick, two straight years with more than 1,400 rushing yards. That is incredible. Uh, how about Rashad White? Well, there's actually a few players that you kind of lump together. Rashad White out of Arizona State, Pierre Strong out of South Dakota State, Tyler Beatty out of Missouri. And what do you see them as? You see them as sleepers, day two guys, day three guys? What do you think? I think they're more day two guys and guys that need to be talked about more. Beatty is someone, don't let the size fool you. Size is not a skill. He's 5'7-ish, maybe 198 pounds. You talk about Deion Lewis type. He's that type, someone that can definitely uh, tote the rock. He did so at Missouri, I think over 1,500 yards rushing this year in the SEC. You also look at Rashad White. Reminds me a lot of a, a throwback player in Harvey Williams. He's a tall runner, smooth as ice water. When you're talking about how he's able to make things happen, pre-line of scrimmage, post-line of scrimmage, and has the long speed to really make things happen outside on the perimeter. And you talk about a small school guy in Pierre Strong, classic, doesn't need volume. He can affect the game as a runner, receiver, and also as a kickoff and punt returner. Had a huge game against Colorado State this past season. All right, Emery, some people in the chat are asking us to talk about Tyreek Hill as these rumors are flying that he could be traded to the Jets or the Dolphins. What do you think about that? Where would you rather see him go uh, between the just, – just hypothetically, those are just two teams that were mentioned. Where would you rather see him go, Jets or Dolphins? I would say Dolphins because now it puts defenses in a bind because you have Jalen Waddle who's legit fast, and you have Tyreek Hill, who's legit fast. So now who are you going to play with double coverage? Because that would then leave someone else one-on-one -on -one wide open. That would open up the entire offense 
and it will make things so much easier for a guy I really like in Chase Edmonds in the backfield. Mm. Him going to Miami would be such a dangerous matchup. Can Tua be the quarterback that Tyreek Hill needs? That's a great question, and, and that's the, the $1 million question that we're trying to answer. So that's why if you want to put him with the Jets, we know Zach Wilson – Wilson yeah. has a deep arm, and now you think about what the Jets have in the backfield of Michael Carter, it makes things easier for him and what they have on a perimeter. So either way, it's going to be great. But if you want the catch and run ability, Dolphins. If you want the deep ball to still be in play, Jets. So that's how I would, how I would, I would sparse the two teams. The Jets do have two picks, I believe, in the top 10. Uh, I give up 10 for Tyreek Hill. Yeah, they've got four and 10. So, oh, man. <laughs> Woo! All right, everybody. You will have a bonus podcast at some point. Uh, we're recording this actually on Wednesday and probably hearing it on Friday. You might be confused. The trades already happened. But if you're listening, if you're watching live on YouTube, expect a podcast. If if and when Tyreek gets traded, this would be wild stuff. Thank you to Emery Hunt. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. And we will uh, we will talk to you later uh, next week, I guess, on Fantasy Football Today in 5.